You know, I think the thumbnail on this is a lie, or the title is a lie. Something is a lie, because that doesn't look like most of my nights off. Uh, that I has mean, a lot of sad involved. Ruby's face is such a mood. Can, can I just say that? Like, Ruby's face in this thumbnail it's is such a mood. Millennial mood of just, ugh. <sighs> Poor baby. Yeah. Anyway, hi! Hi! <laughs> we're just like, yeah. It's been the end of a long week for the both of us, and we're both very tired. And apologies, I'm still ill, so I'm still gonna be hacking up a lung if this show makes me laugh in the slightest. That's okay. I'm sure next week our roles will be reversed, and you'll be fine, and I'll be sick. Yep. Yep. Can we fast forward to then, please? No. Oh. No. No offense. I don't want to be wanna sick be during my work parties. And I don't either. <laughs> so I would very much like to be past this. <sighs> no joke, our office party is next week. And I'm like, if I'm sick, I mean, if, if I'm same, still sick, same. I'm going to be real upset. <laughs> anyway, well, hi, you're everybody. On the tail end. You're on the tail end. I hope so. You know what's good when you're sick? Sweet things. Yay! Sweet things are good with use. Wow. Wow. With use? <laughs> Sweet things are good with use. What do you use them for? <laughs> KZ was wondering whether I've actually recovered from this week. The answer is no. Clearly not. No. I don't think I've had caffeine today. I think that's the problem. All right. Should we pause so you can get some tea? No. <laughs> People think it's funny when I fuck it up. But do you I know think. what's great with harvest tea? What's great with harvest tea? Fred's BS. That it is. Cookies, brownies, jam, pie if you're local. All sorts of good and wonderful things from Fred's BS. You should order it and then put it in your face because it's really good. And also it's great for holiday parties if you need to bring something, if you need to do a gift exchange, if you need to think of something to give to people where you like them and you want to show that you got a gift but you can't really afford to spend a lot of time and money on individual gifts for like every single person. I'm thinking like coworkers. Yeah. Stuff like that. You get them frets. You get them cookies. It's real good stuff and I've done this before and they love it. So. Everything is fresh, never frozen. Everything is made in small batches. You can't find any of these flavors in stores, especially those cookies. They are so good. And of course, if you are LA local, you can do pickup instead of delivery and get all your goods even sooner. So head over to Fred. I can no longer say head over to fredsbs.com. He's doing things differently now. The contact information is in the description below as well as at the end card of this video. So. Do that thing, obtain sweet things, treat yourself, you deserve it, other people deserve it, all that wonderful stuff, happy holidays, seriously, get cookies. Cookies for you, brownies for me, jam for your jam buds, and a BS box for your Gift -giving purposes. associates. <laughs> associates. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? I was trying not to make that sound cold, but associates is a cold we word. We are in Atlas. Your cohorts, your teammates, not your friends. Yeah, the people who aren't your friends <laughs> in any way. <laughs> oh, Lord. Guess what? I'm still not over from last episode. All right, shall we get anyway, to it? Anyway, um, volume seven, chapter six, A Night Off. <coughs> Again, I don't believe that for a hot second, but click. Well, on the thumbnail, it looks like that was election coverage. Election coverage or possibly the Hunter job board. Maybe. I don't know. It looks like Robin Hill and Jacques. So so that I'm guessing it's election, uh, election coverage. I'm going to have flashbacks to three years ago again, aren't I? Yes! And we don't have any booze on hand. Uh, it's over there. We should go get it. No. It's too early. I still I am love too this. tired for that shit. I love this so much. Yeah, it's really good. It's such a good transition. I do appreciate, like, everyone has haircuts except for Yang. She's just like, no. Well, no. yeah, don't touch the hair. Don't touch the hair. Aww. That's such a good transition. It is. Also, we need to see Geppetto again because he's amazing. Pietro. And I love him. <laughs> yeah. Same difference. Yes, I totally forgot his name, but I knew he was Geppetto. Pietro and Maria. She peaced God, out after yes. the first episode. She's like, later. Maria's later, just kids. like, no, none of this shit. 
Cause yeah, some time has passed. So like, did can we check in with Maria? Cause like they've been at this for probably yeah. weeks. A at few this point. weeks, yeah. Like I get the feeling that this is go this season is going to run through the election. Or it's going to end with the results of the election. Oh, I hope we don't have to wait go. all season for the results of the election. I feel like that's going to be within the next episode or two. Oh, great. Wow. Wow. Dead violin, though. Although rioting and mental is finally under control, how does it feel? Hey, it's the racist. The majority of those involved were your supporters. I don't condone rioting. Especially when our city is being denied aid for the hardships we've already had to go through. But Jacques Schnee's latest stunt is holding the city hostage for his own political gain. So I understand their anger. Yep, here's but election day. They show it not in Ivy streets, Brown. But at the polls today. It's election day. Those machines are hackable. Points to Watts. Yep. He's gonna hack the election. That son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah, danger room! Oh! oh! That was awesome! Tiny night ankle stab! I love it. Oh, yeah, girl! Nora, you're gonna kill him. Or not. He's doing pretty well. Your recovery's getting faster. No! <laughs> Ooh. You always been able to do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't normally think it through that much. You guys are evolving, and I still don't even have my sons. Give Maybe. yourself credit. Clover wasn't kidding. You're really giving this your all. Well, we have to with the way things are going. That was. They're not going well, are they? Better Robin than Doc Schnee. Mm-hmm. I suppose so. Either way, this election doesn't bode well for our stability. It could be a chance to work with Robin and get Mantle on your side. Yes! The likelihood of that working. She's right. You have to do something about Mantle. If you can get Robin to trust you... I bet if you opened up to her, she'd understand that you're being framed. Perhaps. But it will only work if she's open, too. And I take it you're here for new mission assignments. You could say that. Oh, he General needs a nap. Now, I want you to take the rest of the day to recuperate. You're giving us a night off? Ordering it. Aww. After tonight's election, we'll be waking up to a very different atmosphere <clears throat> tomorrow. I need you rested and ready for whatever that may bring. Oh. Oh, Ironwood. He needs a nap. way my father could have thought layoffs would do anything but hurt him. So why announce this the day before the election? Unless... That seems like a power play that backfired to me. Mm. Won't matter in a few hours, though. Where are you guys uh, going? I am doing flashbacks. Uh, dancing. Yang and I thought it would be good to get our minds off the election. I thought you said Team Funky was annoying. That's the best part about dance clubs. I can't hear you. <laughs> I mean, legit. I still can't believe you're going to that thing. Just because Ironwood dislikes Robin doesn't mean we all have to. From where I'm standing, both of them seem to be trying their best to help Atlas. As to who's doing a better job. <sighs> but a victory party? Invite's still open if you want in. Penny's gonna be working security. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. You gotta do it like this. That's oh my good. god, they're Fortnite dancing. Hey, Oscar and I are hitting the movies if anyone wants yeah. to. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I understand why this point, though. I just love it. Oh, okay. It does seem a bit premature. Uh, let them have one sure thing. Probably the last sure thing before Amity Tower. Uh, 367. It's changing. We spent so much time worrying about how Ironwood will react to the truth about her. But have any of us considered how we're even going to beat her if we manage to work past that? Jin said she can't be beaten. She told Oz that he couldn't destroy her. But maybe someone else could? I don't know. We should be training right now. We've trained enough. Take some time to- we don't have time. Oh. Party people gonna stay up late. 
<laughs> the kick me drone. Oh no! I don't like this. How many hours do we have, and what percentage of the vote is in? Oh, sweetie. Twice is out with the boys, and Wendy and Hurt off doing their own thing again. At least they're back to being friends. Friends, huh? Just friends. What else would they be? Two people who've gone through that much. I think there's more going on. Oh, oh maybe one of them feels that way, but the other might be worried. Oh, oh my God! God. It's just. <laughs> what's going on right now? Well, how can they figure this out? Fifty-seven. At least they're addressing it. Yep. Oh, hey, what? What are you doing here? Just uh, hanging out with a friend while she's on the job. <laughs> Real cute. Oh God. Try not to be too much of a distraction. We need to be vigilant in case. In case what? In case someone tries to start trouble. Oh, funny. That's why we're here. So feel free to take a hike. Listen, oh, the general is trying to help, all right? Just because you can't understand. What's going on here, Wags? Wags. <laughs> and the pit squeak is back. <sighs> we're concerned about security risks, ma'am. The general doesn't want any surprises tonight. Fine, but stay out of the way. If I get elected tonight, we'll all have to learn how to get along. Still says I'm 57. I keep looking at it in the background. As long as you stay within the law. My the heart. law isn't perfect, you know. It's My heart is sinking. Enough. Trust me, I'm well aware. My only goal is that all the citizens of Mantle and Atlas and Faunus have an equal shot at a good life. That sounds great. And you're planning to do all that equalizing legally, right? Everything I've done is legal. Of course. One hundred percent. Oh my god! Oh, really? oh, she's so cute. Every time it cuts back to the screen, I'm still just like, 57. Scram, kid. We've got a job to do. Mr. Power Play. <laughs> Aww. Remember the last time Penny was at a party? Fifty-nine. It went up. Fifty-seven. Ah, forty-three. The question is whether or not this is legitimate or whether it's Watts. It's Watts. I know Robin will continue that fight on the council. Will you share a few words? Unless, like, the plan is to get her elected and then, like, assassinate her. Maybe. Don't pull a Sienna Con on me, show! It wasn't my best idea ever to go into politics. Ah! For choosing me. You said you believe in me. But I'm the one who believes in all of you. You've proven to me that as individuals, I hate this, I hate this so much. Strong, but together, we are unstoppable. <clears throat> oh. No matter what happens tonight, win or lose, uh. we will continue to fight for our city. Because it is this city that brings us together. I hate this so much. Oh my god. The final minutes. It's. Don't worry. It's a No, it's not. Because, because of election hacking. Ugh. Yes. Finally. Yes. <laughs> that 
Michael. Jeez. At least there's some good coming out of this episode. You sons of bitches. I was gonna say, that is how some of the people in my raid group play Pokemon Go. Oh! oh Kill him! Framing Penny. Worse than I thought it was going to be. We won. We did it. What happened? It was Tyrion. Tyrion's here. Stay. Oh shit. Get Penny out the back now. I'm okay. I'm okay. Last minute voter turnout, nothing. She's been used to cause chaos. Poor baby. For the record, that sure is how it felt when Trump won. <laughs> yep. <coughs> oh, man. Oh. God damn. Oh, that's such good art. Oh. Oh, Fiona, she's so cute. I hope she doesn't die. Yeah. She's gonna die, but I hope she doesn't die. <coughs> and I mean, Ruby's the only one who knows what really yeah. happened because she saw Tyrion she there. She saw but Tyrion. How do you explain that? And then it's coming from someone who has been working with Ironwood all this time. Yeah. So it's like, why would we trust them? I'm curious and as to how Watts was able to make Tyrion <coughs> invisible to Penny. Uh, he doesn't have he an wasn't. ability. So she couldn't see him in the dark. 
No, she could. And then she disappeared, and that's and then he disappeared to her, and that's why she couldn't find him again or fight Maybe him. Maybe his that's semblance, why she was so yeah, no, offensive. No, I I got that, but like. Maybe his semblance is teleportation? I think Watts did something. Well, I mean, he's he's a hacker. He probably yeah. hacked her system to yeah. conceal him. I, again, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but yeah. god damn. If he's able to get into... Well, if he was able to get into Penny's systems, why not just hack her directly and have her be actually guilty of the attacks? We already know her perception can... Well... No. Flip side. Maybe uh, that's for later. Maybe. Also, this way, maybe that was the initial plan and Tyrion went, hell no, I want to get in there. But I want to do some murder. I want to do that. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. I'm sure, well, I've predicted, I predicted a long time ago, a lot of people have, it's not just me, I'm not going to take credit for it, but like, a lot of people predicted that if Penny were to ever come back into the show, Terminator. it would be in a Terminator-esque setting. And maybe that's how it happens, is like, this is how we start off, and then later on, Watts just decides to go full Terminator with it. I mean, and that might also be where we wind up with a systems versus soul thing going on with her. Because mm -hmm. she does have a soul. We established that a while ago. Oh, poor baby. That's what makes her so different from everything else. Poor baby. But yeah, no, she got blamed for this, and I would not be surprised if Watts doctored some of that video. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Uh... And then the, oh, Jacques won, rioting in the streets. Like, ugh, yes, this is what we asked for. Ugh. <clears throat> Twenty sixteen flashbacks. That's uh I mean Yeah. Yeah. It was traumatizing for a lot of people and here we go again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is Watching him do it on an array of phones yeah. fucking killed me, though. Yeah, I was yeah. not kidding about that's how some of the people in my raid group play Pokemon Go. They show up with multiple for phones Velcroed to a clipboard and just... It was just... It was a beautiful, like, I'm a conductor and this is my orchestra moment. It was really well done. Just this moment of, oh shit, this one's a 2% battery. But yeah, this... This was definitely like a, uh, uh, not again. Uh, I didn't need to live through that shit again. Ugh. But honestly, the election of 2016 is going to be a thing that like, that's going to be a thing that's going to be popping up in like literature and media for a long time because it was such a monumental what the fuck to our society. That, that's kind of the, here's where we hit the turning point into dystopia. Like... <laughs> This is the Chancellor getting elected in V for Vendetta. This is like... Yeah. Or uh, the Emperor Palpatine getting uh, emergency powers from the Senate. This is how democracy dies, with thunderous applause. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's a nice way to uh, <laughs> traumatize oneself on a Saturday in December. Cool Yay. beans! Yay! Thanks. Fuck. No, this was a great episode, though. It and really was. It really does. It is very reminiscent of the end of Volume 3 again. Um, and I mean that in the best way, of like, this is a turning point. This is a game changer. And between last volume and this volume, I have been like, our kids have been oddly successful. <laughs> it's probably going to take a turn at some point. And sure enough, here we are. And... I'm excited. I'm terrified. And very sad. Oh, of course. Because like, god damn it, the vote got hacked and the better candidate lost again. Pick up the phone because I called it. <laughs> Even though a candidate who wanted to do <coughs> to a venture capitalist with hacked votes and friends uh, in low places. Oh. Yep. <laughs> this is going to be fun to talk about on RTR. <laughs> You say that like I might not start that morning with a drink. Ooh, Bailey's coffee sounds delicious, actually. Yeah! Yeah! <gasps> we could do mimosas. 
My mouse is giving me a headache. Oh. Bubbly things. It's real stupid. I, I can do mimosas. You can do mimosas. <laughs> so anyway, so we're all nicely traumatized. It's great. It's fine. Everything's fine. Also, holy shit, my OTP. Uh, yes, let's focus on the good. Ren and Nora. I just love that you think they're still just friends? Well, in this conversation, like, who are we talking about? Uh, it's so nice because I, I mentioned um, on this week's uh, Ruby Redux that like I want Bumblebee to be official. Like it's one thing to kind of like lean into it and hint at, but like it's nice to have it Just actually talked about. It. Yeah. And yeah, same with Ren and Nora. It's like they held hands at the end of volume four. And it's like, well, that could be platonic, but it could be romantic, but we really don't have time for it to be romantic. Or maybe one not. of them is sure and one of them isn't. Yeah. It's <laughs> just like, oh, Ren. It's like, oh, you know honey. I've never been good with words. Then forget it. Then screw words. Way to go, Nora. Yay, Yay. my queen. Conversation by proxy. Don't do it. Just have a conversation. Or just this. Uh, but yeah, no, and, and you can tell, like, I love that this doesn't feel like it came out of nowhere. Yeah. They established pretty early this volume that she's kind of frustrated with his lack of momentum on the whole thing. Because, yeah, they've been busy. Yeah, they've been through a lot. And, like, I feel like this is conversations that a lot of the fandom has, too, where it's like, well, we don't need to put it into words. They've been through so much. There's more important things going on than romance right now. We've had those discussions, like, a million times. Conversations are very, very important to relationships. You cannot expect anyone else in the relationship to be a mind reader. You have to talk. Exactly. So for all of this, oh, well, they haven't actually said it, but mm, words are important. Other things are important, too, but also words. Like, yeah. But no, I like, you feel Nora's frustration, and she's like, I just want to know where we stand. I just want you to come out and say it. Hmm. Oh, it was so good. I'm going to, fuck it, we stand here. Yes. It finally. Finally. OTP. OTP. I'm in. I'm in. And, uh, yes. Mark's gonna lose his shit. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. That's a discussion <laughs> for tomorrow. And I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. Uh, other plot points that we have put on the table is Oscar and his semblance and every reminder that he has Because I was wondering about that. I was like, the last time I remember us talking about it, like, I was just thinking about that before we watched this episode. It was like, the last time we talked about it, he hadn't unlocked it. I don't think that's changed. Did that change when I wasn't looking? <laughs> no, still hasn't. Like, well, he's also young. <laughs> he's a baby. He's, uh, he's young. He's a baby. <laughs> he's young. He, he wasn't in for this combat thing before he suddenly wound up with the metaphorical Millennium Puzzle, and hey, there's a... <laughs> Great. Uh... Shiza. What? Um, what if the plan, now that Jacques has been elected, isn't so much to just let him do what he wants on the council, what if the plan is to kill him and make it look like Ironwood? There would be no reason for... Well, you know, that is a good point something something killing one's detractors etc exactly et cetera. because his whole platform was opposing ironwood but now he's on the council which which would make both everybody who supported jock or relied on him slash the schnee dust company that would turn them against ironwood and this incident turns everybody who was with robin against Ironwood. So now you have the whole country, basically, against Ironwood. Yeah. And anything he says after that probably isn't going to be enough to sway, the, uh, to sway them. Especially if that then is like, well, the apocalypse is on its way, everyone. That's probably not going to do yeah. anyone any good. <clears throat> and, the, and even if someone says, hey, you know, the election was rigged, it'll be, oh, Ironwood did it. <laughs> because he doesn't like Robin. It's like, um, actually, no vacuo serial killer and vacuo hacked our elections. Oh, 
But this is the frozen north. <laughs> I know. That's why I went with vacuum. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Just, oh, this is a shit show. How long till Jacques and by proxy everyone else find out about Amity and try to... Yeah. Sabotage. That's the word I was looking for. Well, this, this is basically a really bad development. It was, all right, well, we're all prepared to work with Robin, and she seems a reasonable person, even if we don't always agree with her methods. Son of a bitch. <sighs> well, on the plus side, I feel a lot better about Marrow. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the point, is to lull me into a false sense of security. Yeah. Oh. I well, hope it's like, not a everyone traitor. take a night off, but we're going to make Marrow security at this party. It's okay. Penny will make up for the deficiencies. Oh. And then this is going to drag Pietro back into it. Yeah. Like, you built her, you programmed her. How could this have happened? Oh. I hope she went home to Dad. And Maria. Oh. Maria has common fucking sense. But also bringing up that, no, I saw Tyrion at that party. Well, who's Tyrion? Well, <laughs> he nearly killed Crow. Where the fuck is Crow in all of this? Probably date night. <laughs> With Clover? I wouldn't hate that. I wouldn't either. 100% be on board with they that. They went to the same movie that John and Weiss and Oscar did. Aww. <laughs> I just thought, we're going to the movies that Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I love uh, Weiss just not wanting to connect to reality for two and a half to three hours. I get that. Oh, could you imagine walking out of a movie theater? Walking out of the movie theater, and there's it's... grim everywhere, your <laughs> fuckwit of a dad is on the council, and shit's bad. God damn it! Just like, and the movie wasn't even that <coughs> good. Or, the movie was great, and you're like, wow, the, what an amazing movie, and then you walk out and you're like, ah, crap. <laughs> I get the feeling that unless the movie was really good, she wouldn't be able to enjoy it anyway. One of those fruitless distraction, trying not to think about other larger things sort of uh, endeavors. I wonder, is there an MCU, like, equivalent in Remnant? Like, do they, like, is there a franchise with a massive cinematic universe that everyone's invested in? <laughs> Look, we know there was a Fall of Beacon movie. We At do. least one. <laughs> we saw the poster. <laughs> Did we see that poster? Is it still playing? I don't know. Is that when they went to go see oh, it? Oh no! I hope not! <laughs> Could you imagine that them sitting down and watching such a them? bad movie? Why would any of them choose that? I'd like to think that's not what they went to see. They're just like... It, it would be like the Ember Island players. They're, they go to see Achievement Hunter the Musical. Yes! Which yes. I still haven't seen, so... Let's do but that. yes, what movie did they go see? Frozen 2. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Do they show this on location? Arendelle isn't a location in Atlas. Okay, but you know how they shoot in places that look similar? <laughs> uh. <sighs> Gosh, when you live in a world where everyone does have their own superpower, what the hell do you make movies about? <laughs> in a world where no one has power. What? And when everyone is super, no one will be. Oh! I feel like that could be a whole separate other little what are movies about in <laughs> I would movie absolutely world. like let's drill down on lots that. of coming of age stories about huntsmen sure. and huntresses. For sure. For sure. Definitely. I'm sure Probably you get plenty of rom coms. It's just rom-coms where you know it's two, uh, like, a huntsman and a huntress, or two huntresses, or whatever, who are rivals and always going on the same missions and always end up thrown together until Buddy that one night movies. where they're stuck alone in a cave and they have to confront their feelings. Buddy cop movies, for sure. Yes! Buddy cop movies, for sure. Uh, murder mysteries. That's a timeless genre. <laughs> it is. Oh, what else? You know, historical bullshit. I was gonna say, do you think Remnant ever had stuff about what actually happened to the gods? Uh, yeah, like your your Lord of the Rings sort of proxies for for like high fantasy, like this world's equivalent of a high fantasy. But what I'm thinking about, I'm like, was there ever a time in Remnant's history where there was like a cowboy equivalent? Horror movies about what the Dragon Continent is actually like. <laughs> 
Could you imagine like like someone gets it like 90% right and the Salem fucking sends out someone to hunt them down and be like, what? Do also, we know? again, what do your horror movies look like when Grimm exists in the world that you live in? Apathy. I mean, nobody knew what the apathy actually looked like until they caught one. I think it's one of those that, I mean, we have horror movies like Cujo and Lake Placid and Jaws. Yeah. So about I'm sure there are normal of... things that 95, 99% of the time aren't actually trying to, well, no, 95, uh, alligators are terrifying sometimes. Hippos just, are mean. Hippos. <laughs> you never see a horror movie about hippos. And hippos do a lot more murder than you'd really Unless think. you count that one scene in the first Jumanji movie. Uh, and point being, we make a lot of horror movies about animals that Wait, most of the time aren't actually trying to kill us. Yeah. So imagine horror movies about Grimm that are actually trying to kill you. Like, this is a known fact. Can you imagine the horror movie about someone who gets split off from a caravan or survivors of a plane crash who have to survive in the wild with Grimm around? Oh, it's yeah. the gray, but there's an actual reason for the animals to be attacking you. Uh, and slightly less Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson doing the, those broken bottles, getting ready to fight <laughs> a bail. <Graham>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'd watch that movie. <laughs> I would watch Liam Neeson fighting a Beowulf. Absolutely. I would watch Liam Neeson as an the, old grizzled huntsman the that revenant, has to teach a new one his tricks. The Revenant, uh, where Leo DiCaprio fights a bear Grimm. <laughs> Just fights at Ursa, like, sure, sure, that's how this works. But yeah, again, we, we make horror movies about animals that, for the most part, aren't usually intelligent enough to want to murder humans for the sake of murdering humans. Like, slasher movies where the, where the killer has a semblance, and they have a semblance that's really helpful in terms in of helping them murder. do their slasher movie thing. I'm, I'm having my Hero Academia flashbacks to Stain. <laughs> Just like, mmm, mmm. Oh, what an interesting you, quirk. You, you wind up with some semblances of it. <coughs> How could you possibly use this shit for good? There are some semblances that are just You're made like, for serial I guess wars. I'll be an accountant because my superpower sucks. <laughs> But also just like, I did get also like comedies or weird whatever, uh, yeah. or just like awful Joker style movies about how someone with a semblance that, you know, people assume it's going to be used for bad and they're trying so hard to use it for good and do what they can, but everyone just keeps rolling over them. So finally they go, fuck it, I'll lean into the curve. I wonder. And then they become evil. I wonder actually, I'm sure there wouldn't necessarily be any like actual censorship about the thing but i wonder if it would be kind of against the social norm to do kind of horror movie-esque things because and granted it's it's all meant to entertain because it would attack because grim. <laughs> because if you go to a movie theater and you get scared or you feel uncomfortable or you feel uneasy like would is there kind of like any art censorship for anything that's meant to make people feel discomfort to like probably no, not because it's all there's entertainment just, there's just movie theaters that hire huntsmen <laughs> their entire job is just to be there like all right guys we've got the next stab movie coming out um we're gonna need to bring in a couple of freelance huntsmen as well as our usuals okay okay nice thanks. reference by the way hey uh, but yeah that's, I mean, again, uh, Probably not because those movies met, are meant to entertain and the people who go see them are people who have fun with them. So they wouldn't. But I mean, like, your dramatic movies, or like you have a long running franchise and someone dies in it, and people, people in the movie theater are going to be grieving over that character depending on how close they are. I'm, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually remembering the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I have a friend who pretty much latched on to a couple of the minor characters, some of the Navy people, who just kept surviving movie after movie because they're not big, huge main characters. So it's like, you're named, you have a face, you're someone for the audience to attach to, but you're not important enough to really fuck up. And then in the fourth movie, one of them, died in the very final battle, you know, that joke about, you know, oh, I claim this land for it, and then he gets shot. That was one of them. 
Uh, and I'm just sitting there seeing this movie with her, and I just had this moment of, oh dear, <laughs> yeah. So it, it it was one of those like you know for most people, oh that was a joke, but for people who were attached to that character, that's a moment of, yeah. So I have a so I, have a, I, I think a huntsman who just works at a movie theater, like no, it's not his job to make the popcorn or sweep the seas or whatever. It's his job to make sure that someone being emotionally distraught over something happening to their fave doesn't bring Grimm down into the theater. So I kind of love this. I also, movie theater huntsman. Uh, yeah, I, I love the idea of movie theater huntsman, but I'm wondering if just like as a as a social thing, maybe not necessarily like a corporate mandate or anything like that, or even like an actual law, if just as a social convention, if that means all art produced in this world is essentially toothless because I like it can't have any it. edge to it lest it makes someone upset. <laughs> I like the <laughs> They made a movie about the fall of Beacon. And you can make a movie about a national tragedy that doesn't take any political stance, that presents it as very heroic and it's very It's still noble. upsetting because people died. For sure. But for there people, will be people who far see that removed movie. Oh, from that's it, a good point. Like, you could make a movie about the tragedy that has very little to do with the tragedy. And thus we wind up with the Ember Island players. Yep. Okay. We went off on a weird tangent. We did, but I feel better now. <laughs> and of course, everyone watching this is like, is this the content that was, I'm here for? That was a mental wall we put up to like to stop talking about the election. That was basically. a little bit of, I need to feel better about life. Anyway, Let's we're talk actually, about movies. No, we're actually running out of time on the camera, <laughs> so we need to wrap this. Oh yeah, how cl oh yeah, we yeah, go. yeah. Oh, we've been uh, going for a bit. <laughs> I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. If you want to talk more horror stuff, go check out Silver Screams. And and I do a Lost retrospective podcast called No Love Lost, where my co-host loves Lost and I don't. We talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Katie. You can follow me all over the social medias as well as on Twitch at Kiaje. That is K I A X E T. Yes. Subscribe to Rooster Team Radio if you want to hear lengthier discussions about these particular episodes. Yes, after we've had a chance to watch the episode again and maybe percolate a little. Yep. Like, do that. <laughs> yeah, if you like this, if you want to support this, all of that fun stuff, we have a Patreon, which gets you these reactions early. We have a Ko-fi if you want to throw a couple bucks our way. Uh, we take commissions, not requests, commissions. And, of course, supporting our sponsor supports us, so get you some Fred's BS because that is some super good stuff. Info is all down there. Uh, please prevent us from getting eaten alive by Grimm, who may or may not appear in movie theaters, by <laughs> algorithm. Like, subscribe. Algorithm. All those buttons. Hit all those buttons and share it with your friends and all that fun stuff. I feel like the discussion on what our movie's like in Remnant alone is worth a share. So yeah, like, subscribe, ding. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Someone makes a someone makes basically the Scream franchise, and it's just Tyrion's life story. Oh gosh, uh, no! He doesn't get to be Ghostface. Murder! He doesn't get to be Ghostface. He can never come up as anything as elaborate that Billy and Stu came up with. But you know what kind of what? movies I'd like to see in the world of Remnant? What musical? Oh my god! <laughs>